Hello and welcome to an in-depth tarot reading for Leo. I'm using the Celtic cross spread and the deck is Tarot Illuminate. As always, these are very general readings geared to the energy of an astrological sign. This um, is fun readings to do. You're going to make fantastic connections, but this does not compare to a personal reading suited specifically to you and specific questions with which you will get specific answers with the tarot. So if you would like to book a personal reading with me, go to my tarot website, The Tarot Parlor at Tarot Readings with AmethystRain.blogspot.com. Now, Leo, on to your reading. You know that you have a sun sign, a rising sign, and a moon sign. Some months, your rising or moon sign will resonate more with you than your sun sign. So keep that in mind. And um, sometimes I forget, but I will try to remember to put links in the description below this video to free calculators to help you figure out your moon and your rising sign if you don't know what it is. So anyway, on to Leo. We are going to start with card number one. Hello, Leo. I have got the cards all drawn for you and laid out, and I have them face down. I always, most of the time, like to keep them face down, so it's a surprise to me, and I, I immediately have to draw off of what pops into my head when I turn a card, which um, usually makes pretty darn good connections. The first card for Leo is what envelops or surrounds you. It's an energy from you or it's an energy from circumstances. It's the key card that starts our reading off. Sometimes it sets the tone and sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see. What is the card for Leo? Three of Cups. Uh, this is a card that usually means a gathering, a celebration, a reason to be happy and jump for joy and uh, kick up your heels and raise a toast. So for some of you, you Leos, this could mean reaching a milestone that you're going to celebrate and, um, and enjoy and relish for others. It may mean uh, closer connections, family gatherings, special birthdays, anniversaries, um, weddings, receptions, um, some reason for a group of people to get together and make a toast and be happy. As always, I want to take a look at this card and see what else, if anything, we can pull from it. Ooh, there's like sweet success. For some of you Leos, you've been, you've been trying to reach this goal or reach this spot and accomplish this thing, whatever this thing is for you for a very long time. So, so it's like you've been going up and up and up and working your way and working and working and working. And uh, this is really going to be sweet for you. Sweet. You are going to taste the sweet taste of success because you've earned it and you've worked really hard for it. And some of you may have been at this for a very long time. This is not an overnight accomplishment for a lot of you. Oh, accolades. Um, uh, there's the idea of receiving accolades, job well done, pats on the back, um, being appreciated for your talents and what you can do and what you accomplish. And that's always like soothing balm to the ego. And um, we need a lot of that. So to start off our reading for, for Leo, this is a wonderful positive card, the Three of Cups. There have been some readings that have started out over the past year that have had very positive, joyful, cozy fluffy bunny cards to begin with, and then there were lots of interesting twists and turns and complications and developments. So with that said, we're going to go on to card number two for Leo. Card number two, uh, I love how they say this, what crucifies you? <laughs> um, it can either be something, yes, that crucifies you and nails you to the wall and something you have to face or... Um, <laughs> something that comes along and you have no choice uh, but to face it. But it can also be um, something that is preoccupying your time, your attention, um, something that is your focus, which doesn't sound quite so dramatic and um, like it could be something so negative. It's something that crucifies you, but it could be, you know, I'm not saying. But um, I like to think of it more in what is the focus of your attention, what's going on in your life right now that is taking up your time and attention. And for Leo, King of Wands. First, the energy, just in case this is not 
an actual individual or some of you Leo. So the energy is very concentrated. Um, it's very um, specified to details, very detail oriented. Um, it's extremely controlling. Everything has to work. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. It's got to be what it's got to be. Um, there's a there's an issue with thinking outside the box. There's an issue with conservatism or um, I, I can't think of the other word I want. It's like um, conservative. It's like not thinking out of the box and being very restrictive um, with how you're viewing a problem or an issue um, or um, a way to solve it. Um, it feels like some of you Leos may be stuck, actually. You are dealing with an individual or a set of circumstances um, that leaves you kind of in a quandary and you don't know how to solve it. So some of you may not be thinking outside the box to find an unusual solution, one that will work, but wouldn't be something the ordinary person might think about. That's the energy. As an individual, as a, as a grown man, which um, the kings generally for me will be male figures. I know a lot of readers say it can be male or female, male or female, but for me, they, they usually stay pretty close to, um, pretty close to either king or queen as they come up, unless there are, are like other unusual issues involved on this level. But as a male figure, um, he's coming up, um, he's like so bratty. He's like, um, like a little boy in a man's body um, he, he's very revengeful. He's very passive aggressive. Um, he's a bully to someone he knows that he can get away with bullying. But at the same time, like out and about, if he is faced with someone bigger and stronger and, um, more defiant than he is, that, you know, he will, he's a coward. Um, it's the kind of, of, I think of it as a kind of playground bully. So, um, so he's not like he's not going to like usually be physically abusive or anything like that but he's just uh he likes to get his way and he likes to influence people he always likes to be right but but in very passive aggressive ways it's just uh um he has a unique personality he's very conventional that's the word i was trying to think of earlier conventional he's very conventional this king cannot think outside the box he doesn't even like to admit that there is an outside of the box. That's how conventional um, he is. Uh, so this could be an individual that you're dealing with right now in your life, either in some capacity, whether at work or whether in a relationship or a family setting, um, a friend setting where, ooh, you know, uh, but this is a relationship that you're dealing with and it feels like a box. So for some of you Leos, what I'm feeling is like the idea of being walled off, uh, being separated, um, not being able to get my ideas out, not being able to connect or relate to someone or other people to have them see what I see and feel what I feel and know what I know. And that's kind of linking around because this king this king loves to get accolades, excuse me. He loves to, to be patted on the back. He loves for the world to think that he is wonderful and he's perfect and he's like perfect husband, perfect father, perfect employee, uh, perfect employer, whatever. But actually he's not. And behind the scenes, they would be quite surprised at some of his childishness and, and how difficult he actually is to deal with because he doesn't want the Well, we found out what crucifies you, Leo. Wowzy, wowzy, wow. Um, this kind of energy, this kind of king can make it very difficult for you to make a decision that's positive for yourself if you are very closely connected to him in some way, in a, in whether he's a, a spouse, partner, whether he's um, a close family member, um, uh, whether he's a boss, someone with influence over you. So it's very hard to make the decision you want to make with him breathing down your neck and whispering in your ear about how it should be and how he thinks it should be, et cetera, et cetera. So just know that. It, it might be so good like to tell him to blow off and make your own decision, but you know it's never that simple. It's always easier for an outsider to say that. So with that said... Um, I don't know if you can see it. I got incense going back there. Wow, it's uh, very strong in this small room. 
Um, anyway, we're going to go on to card number three, what completes you? What completes you? This is also to the left, which gives me a feeling of in the past. It, it always feels like something in the past. What completes you? This is something for me, usually, that has already come to pass. Um, usually something not that far in the past. What completes you? What makes you feel whole? What makes you happy? Um, what gives you a satisfying feeling of whether it's warm and fuzzy or, or whatever? A million different things are like racing in my mind and it's coming too fast. So we're just going to take a look at this card. What completes um, some of you Leos is the Six of Pentacles. Um, the Six of, of Pentacles is a wonderful card of accomplishment. Also, accomplishment, it's like um, uh, traditionally and many, many, many times in my readings, it will come forward when someone um, has reached a comfortable point at some time in their life, whether this moment has been sustained or not. I don't know yet because we have to look at the rest of the cards. But it's a moment in life where you are doing more than okay. You know, you can take care of yourself financially with the material aspects of life, the pentacles, of course, but you can also um, share this. Um, and this can be so many, so many things. I know with pentacles, it's more geared toward the physical aspects of life, whether, whether it's um, cash flow that you're sharing, uh, whether it's uh, your home that you've opened up to someone, whether it's um, your heart that you've opened up to someone, that's also a physical aspect. If you've taken in um, foster children, adoptive children, someone um, in the family or a close friend who needs a leg up, they need a place to stay, they need a hand right now in their life. So it's the idea of sharing and it's the idea of having enough to share, which is also like the whole crux of this. If you didn't have enough for yourself, you wouldn't have enough to share. So this is something nice in your background, and I'm so glad it's a positive card. Also, um, um, uh, what completes you um, to the left, my left, when I'm using this spread, also, to me, it's something you can draw back in. If you want to draw some energy from this, some experience from this, uh, back into your life now, you can replay off this energy. I, I always, I don't know if I've ever mentioned that before with the, the Celtic cross spread, but the position number three for me is something you can draw back in and play off of, work with again. So this is really super nice energy, and I don't know, some of you Leos may find yourself in a situation right now where you need to do this. You need to like draw in that positive energy and work with it again and relish it and grow with it and um, like feel it all over again. So there you go. I'm going to look at this card. I always like to look at it in case there is. Uh, there's a third party feel to this. I don't know if the third party is like adding to the, um, the material, beneficial, comforting feeling of this card, a third party. Um, business partner, family member, spouse, um, um, something of that nature. Close connections, close connections. So, okay, that's all I'm getting from that card. We're going to lay that card down because I want to move on. We're going to move on to card number four, which is what lies underneath you in the basement of you, under your feet. What do you have buried under your house? That's kind of the feeling for me for this card. Uh, sometimes, once in a while, this card will come up for me for a client who has something to hide. Um, there's something you're not sharing with people. There's something you don't want them to know about you. There's something in your past, or, or sometimes it's something in your past that, that like isn't bad, but it was perhaps painful or a growing experience or something totally out of your control that was unpleasant that you went through, and you don't necessarily share this. So sometimes what lies beneath you underneath you. It's something you you learned from and something that will never go away because it's always there. But but perhaps, um, you know, it's it's a growing experience or it was a learning experience. So now I'm curious myself, what lies underneath you, Leo? It is the Ace of Swords reversed. Uh, for some of you, 
it did come up reverse, but I like to show you the cards upright so you can actually see the picture and benefit from, from it that way. In its reverse state for me, it's implying that what lies beneath you in the past is an estrangement or a falling out with someone. For some of you Leos, not all of you Leos, but some of you Leos, uh, there was either miscommunication in the past or someone stopped talking to you or you stopped talking to someone. And so the whole, the sword that, that represents um, the element of air for me, it represents communication and connection and and um, verbal, uh, verbal connections and being able to be understood with the, the, the word. And um, for some of you, that went awry somewhere along the line. So some of you may have that underneath you. Now, for some of you Leos, this might be someone that you will have the opportunity of reconnecting with in the future. I mean, it's down there. It's down there underneath you in the basement of this reading. So, um, so I don't know if it's something that you would ever want to bring up, whether it's someone you would even want to try to reconnect with or to um, start communication with again. But um, that's something, um, sometimes we have regrets with that when you cut people out of your life or they cut you out of your life and there is an estrangement. Sometimes, actually, even though it's painful, it can also be for the best if it's someone who is negatively influencing you or drawing your life in different directions and different paths that, that you maybe didn't want it to go or that it shouldn't go. So sometimes there's people like that in our life that we have to cut out of our lives because they're very negative their goals may be very negative, what they're doing and their lifestyles may be very negative. So we're just best to distance ourselves from them and that kind of situation. Then again, there's like rifts, rifts with friends, rifts and misunderstandings with family. That's the kind of thing that in the future we might want to think about bringing up and, and playing with it and toying with it and and seeing how we want to handle it, and if we want to handle it. Do we want to look at this again, or do we just not want to deal with this and just leave it beneath us? And so I'm getting a whole bunch of ideas uh, that have come through for this, and I believe that this happens when I do these kinds of readings, because I'm not reading for a single individual. I'm reading for Leos, and um, uh, you're not all Leos in the same capacity, um, at different birth dates, different um, times of birth, different locations. That all makes a difference in the Leo that you are. Also, your sun and, and um, your moon and rising sign, excuse me, will also um, make a difference in what kind of Leo you are. So there can be different things along this line in this aspect that's going on for various Leos out there. I uh, so want to look at this card too. Um, for some of you Leos, it's as though a single individual is holding um, I was going to say the key to this, they're actually holding the sword. There, there's a single individual out there, whether that's your hand, I see gripping that sword, and you are in control of whether you are going to change the situation or not, or whether it's somebody else and it's someone else's decision. It's not quite sure about that. It could be like two different scenarios for two different Leos. So, But know that there's someone has control of this situation and this lack of communication or this miscommunication. So someone out there has the option of fixing this or reinstating something, resolving something. So that's just what I picked off at the tail end of that card. Okay, Leo, we are going to go on to card number five is what is behind you. What is behind you? Okay. Well, that can be something also, it, it's a little bit different than the, what's underneath you. What's underneath you goes a little deeper. What's behind you? Not so much. And this can also be a time thing for me. What's What's underneath you might be something you want to keep buried. What's behind you might be so close to the surface that it might pop up without your being aware of it. So we're going to go on and see what this is for Leos. Oh, what is behind a lot of you, Leos, is two of wands. Um, some of you may have had a very long period of 
waiting for something. You, you hmm, may have been waiting to find out if a partnership or relationship was going to go forward or going to play itself out. Um, you may have been waiting um, business-wise for contracts, for negotiations, for offers. Um, you may have been waiting relationship-wise for questions, for solutions, for plans for the future. There's just a, a great deal of the idea of waiting with this card. You wait. Um, uh, there's a, a, and also an essence of patience that comes with this card, too, with that idea of waiting. This card feels stalled. It's like, it's just kind of hanging there. What lies behind you? Um, uh, for some of you Leos, as I look at the card, aha, uh, for some of you Leos, you spend too much time looking in the past, looking behind you at something that, whatever it was behind you, a broken relationship, a job that didn't work out, something else very unique and personal to you that didn't work out. You're spending too much time looking back there and, and dwelling on it. So for some of you Leos, this card is implying that, uh, okay, it's all right, just leave it back there and turn around and like see what's ahead of you and move forward that way. That is one thing that's coming up from this card. Uh, uh, um, some, some of you may be, be so, there may have been more than one relationship um, gone awry, disappointment, one or more disappointments as far as work or employment or job opportunities or um, scholarly opportunities or uh, other things unique to you. There, there, you may have been like had little disappointments all through life and so um, you become complacent and either you stop trying or you don't expect good things to happen. Um, the law of attraction, you must expect good things to happen. You must want good things to happen. You must actually believe in your mind that good things are happening. Not present tense, not past tense, but pre um, but not even future tense. It's, it is not future, not past tense, present tense. It is happening. You have to believe and think that it is happening right now. I'm thinking in terms of like how magic works and how witchcraft works and whatever you're casting a spell for, you have to cast that spell as though what you're asking for, what you're trying to conjure and manifest has already become. So, um, so it's that kind of energy, and I don't know how better to explain it to you than that way, and I hope this doesn't offend anybody out there listening to a reading who doesn't practice witchcraft. It's, um, it's not, you know, bad or evil or scary or anything. It's, it's the, mo the movement of energy. So, so Leos, if you want to move energy forward, you have to, to be able to um, understand the law of attraction and manifesting and stop dwelling on losses. So that's, I'm going to put this card down. That's like, the biggest thing is uh, some of you are dwelling on losses and you're you're blocking your own future accomplishments or goals or, or you know your uh, um, awards or movement forward. You're blocking yourself with that. I don't know what else to say. That card is just like in my face even after I put it down. Um, the message is so big. So I just want to move on from that. Um, I hope that you understood that. If you haven't, email me and. No, don't email me. I don't want 100 emails asking for something more specific. If you want to know more, I can tell you what you can do. You can go to the tarot parlor and purchase a personal reading. Um, and that will give you more specific details connected to you. Okay, I'm going to go on with this last card here. What lies ahead of you? Um, futuristic card for me. I've said this before, but it's like immediate future. It's like Something you might be right on the brink of. Coming up. Coming up. Oh, I didn't even give time to contemplate about, about the position of this card and what it means to me. Um, what lies ahead of some of you? Oh, and this looks so awesome in this deck. It's death. As I've said probably a gazillion times, um, the death card usually and most definitely not so much with the cards that have come up here at all um, it does not imply death it implies um, transfiguration transformation huge changes um, stages of life one stage of life closing so another one can open um, huge transitions 
aha, some of you Leos apparently are going to like stop dwelling on the past and you are going to listen to me and turn around and you are right on the cusp of something big for you. Um, some of you may be moving to new locations, starting over. Some of you may be um, starting new jobs, like completely changing your, your job choice or your career. Some of you may be starting new relationships, coming off the cusp of divorce, a divorce or a separation or the end of one relationship. There are so many things. Usually when you're going to start into this huge, big transformation, that means that you have closed something else at some other aspect of your life in order for this new change to come about. Usually that's the way that it is. And I'm going to look at this card for a minute. So we're talking. Oh, some of you will leave bodies in the wake. <laughs> that, some of you will have had to uh, fight for a new job. You've had to stand up for yourself. I, I get the idea and the feeling that um, for a few of you Leos, there's been like maybe one person or into, yeah, one individual that's like impeding your process forward. If you finally figured out who it is, you were just going to walk right over them. That horse is just walking right over that body and staring at it. And to me, for right at this moment, it represents someone who has impeded your progress. Whether intentionally or whether, um, um, whether intentionally, which is really devious, or whether by undermining your self-confidence and your ego, like, like, why do you want to try out for that? You're never going to get that. And you don't know enough to do this or, oh, um, um. I just don't see a relationship with these people, this person, because you just are too different. That's just not going to work. That kind of person, that may be the kind of person that some of you Leos had to walk right over. Uh, you had to knock them down and walk right over it in order to move on because you have to get rid of that negativity. It, um, or a law of attraction, again, if, if you are, are if fixated on that kind of energy, if you are inundated with that kind of negative energy, um, it's going to create blockages. It's going to create failures because you're you're that's what you're conjuring. So that was interesting. So look around your life, Leo. Who is holding you back? What is holding you back? Figure this out. Figure this out and fix it or remove it or remove yourself from it. And go forward. Okay. Whew. This spread and that incense makes me feel very uh, breathy sometimes. I, can, it's, I think it's burning out now. It's really heavy. <clears throat> okay. We're going to go on now. I've got four cards left here. And I love, I love card number seven. This is you. And I always like to say sometimes this is a very um, personal card because this is the you that you are when you're all alone. This is the you that you are stripped down. And sometimes this can be the you that you are that you never show to the outside world. So once in a while, there have been very personal things that have come up, but we'll see. So for Leo, this is you. It came up reversed. I'm gonna show it to you up, right? The two of swords. This is you, someone who is having a hell of a time making a decision. Some of you are having a terrible time making a decision and sticking to it. Um, some of you are at a crossroads and you're either not looking at everything clearly, you're not laying out a decent game plan for yourself, or you're not being realistic and you, you either can't make a decision or you can't make an intelligent decision because you're not looking at it realistically or you don't have all the facts and you don't have all the information that you need. She's blindfolded, you know, you don't have all the information you need to make an intelligent decision. Some of you Leos are very, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, inconsistent in decisions or inconsistent in your choices of what you want to do. You're like constantly changing your mind, changing your mind, changing your mind. This could be for something very big and specific that's come up in life and you don't quite know how to deal with it or you've never dealt with it before. So maybe for some of you, um, you don't know what ducks you need to have in a row to do what you're doing. So you may either... Stop trying to figure this out because it's too big and scary and confusing. 
or you're going to have to stumble through it one step at a time and make a decision and move on and make a decision and move on to the next thing and the next thing. And, and some of your decisions may be good and right and you'll move forward smoothly and some not so much and you're going to stumble or stall, but you just keep moving forward. Just keep figuring it out as you go. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's called life. We don't always know what's going to happen. We don't know how we're going to work things out, but we must feel pretty fairly certain that we will, or we probably wouldn't have tried in the first place. So hang tight. Um, for some of you, this is how you are in all aspects of life all the time. You're just very hesitant to make big decisions or important decisions or decisions at all. For others, it's very specific to something that's going on now and you're not always like this. And for those of you who are not always like this, um, your ability to have self-confidence in your decisions, it'll come back. It will come back as things become clearer. Just going to look at the card a minute. Ah, that moon is behind you. Um, someone either in your past or someone, someone close to you but beneath you. I, I don't know how to explain beneath you. If it's a job situation, it's like someone not on the same level. Like a, like in the army, you're on <laughs> different levels, privates and sergeants and corporals and captains, whatever. So um, as someone hasn't been truthful with you. That's the whole point of this that I'm trying to get at. Someone close to you, behind you. It's either in the past or it's someone beneath you in some strange, odd way. Behind you, behind you. Um, someone in the past who probably hasn't been honest with you that hasn't helped you move forward um, with a decision now. It just might be adding to this feeling of indecision. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. We kind of took a long way around to get there. That's what I'm trying to say. That moon just feels deceptive, but it's in the past. So look to the future. Uh, take what information and advice you get from the future coming towards you, not from someone or something in the past. Okay. Well, got that out of the way, didn't we? Card number eight is what surrounds you. This is so close to what crucifies you. What crucifies you is also what's surrounding you because it's so in your face important. What surrounds you now um, uh, is usually something totally out of your control. It can be something big or it can be little and just the energy around you. What's around you now? Um, situations, circumstances, people, be anything. So we're going to take a look at this card, Leo. What surrounds you? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, we have it here. Two of Cups. I can see now where some of the decisions for some of you Leos, what surrounds you now is like couples energy. Um, for some of you, this is happy energy. You may just be starting a relationship and you're trying to figure things out and you're taking it slow and, and decisions may come um, slow to you also. Um, the idea of opening up to someone, the idea of intimacy and commitment can be coming slow perhaps for some of you because of past experiences that were kind of on the negative side. Um, for some of you, it may be going slow just because it's all new to you. For some of you, you've never been in this kind of situation before where you were on, you were on the verge or the edge of, uh, of, so of a more serious relationship, a more committed relationship. You have, it's like an aha moment when you're in that stage of life and this is all new and you haven't possibly been tainted by, tainted by past uh, relationships that were bad. The idea of connecting with someone, it's all new to you and there's so much to think about. There's like a home together and uh, for some of you, bank accounts together, um, figuring how the two people are going to spend the money together where you may have always been single. So you kind of line up your own thing. You do your own budget and you, you do your own thing. Now it's like, ooh, two people have to decide this. So there's a, there's just a lot of, of coupling that is new when you are new to this and it's a new experience for you. That's coming through really strong. For others of you, there's a hesitancy because some of you may be coming off of a divorce or just a really lousy relationship or uh, past negative experiences that are uniquely personal to you and have left you um, rather marked 
in this um, area of life. So it could be any any and all of that. So I'm going to take a look a minute. The Two of Cups is, is more geared to, um, the Lovers is the major arcana card that's just all over the place, like with new physical frenzy love. The Two of Cups is more solid and more committed. There's a future with this card. There's important decisions that need to be made with this card. Um, a rationality that kind of has to be maintained above all the flighty love stuff going on because there's like real important down-to-earth mundane things that have to be dealt with. Just let me look. Just one second. It's like, um, <laughs> ooh, well, no, this can't be, this can't be. Okay, I'm getting like two separate feelings. For uh, one set of Leos, it's you're going in with your eyes closed. Um, um, for some of you, you either don't know what to expect because you've never done this before, you're, or you're very naive and you're very easily led and you're, you're, a, you're a follower. So if you're a follower, which is why it's so hard to imagine Leos being followers, but um, for some of you, like on the cusp of Virgo, that's a, a possibility. Um, but you're going in with eyes closed. Some of you are going in with eyes closed. There's either information that you don't know either about the person or their finances or their job or the situation, something unique to the situation. Don't go into this with your eyes closed. Um, also the idea, um, uh, for some of you Leos, um, actually the idea of the commitment, the idea of hooking up, the idea of like connecting all these life threads that go together with this card. Sometimes it's okay to maintain a certain separateness in that. Um, I know married couples who never put their bank accounts together. They have always maintained separate accounts. Um, I know married couples, uh, married ladies who have never changed their, their maiden name. That, that's their name and, and they want to keep their birth name. Um, there's a, there, there's that kind of energy coming through that it's okay to be a couple, but you don't have to merge so tightly that you're like one person because face it, we are never one person. Yeah. We, you know, you're two separate individuals with two different personalities, um, different, different likes, different tastes. And, and so you don't have to merge so much that you lose yourself or you lose your personality. You lose who you are. I guess that's a big, um, big message coming through this card. I'm going to put that one down. This deck is so colorful and so beautiful. Um, I love it. Um, I hope that you are enjoying the images from it. Okay, before I pick that next card up, that next card is your hopes and fears. Um, this card, sometimes in the past year, it has come up and it's been very scary. And and I try to um, I try to tell people this isn't actually what's passing, or this isn't what's going to pass. This is what's in your head. These are either things you hope and wish for, or things that you are afraid of that you fear is going to happen, or you fear will take place. You know, something that you're afraid of. So what is this card? Your hopes and fears, Leo. Ace of Pentacles. Aha. It's funny that we were just talking about the bank accounts, the money, um, all that kind of thing, because that plays right into this. Your hopes and fears, it, 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 um, for those of you Leos who are going into a relationship, um, for those of you Leos who are trying to sustain a relationship or fix a relationship or start a relationship, um, the, the financial aspects of it, the material aspects of it um, are one of your hopes or um, to me, it feels more like fear. Um, and so when I said it's okay to get married and still maintain a, your own bank account, it's like, it's like you're, that doesn't mean that you're going to try to hide something from your partner or to be dishonest about money. It just means you want to maintain your independence. You know, um, it, it's nothing... Um, it's nothing to shadow the relationship. It's not a comment on the relationship. It's just maintaining a normal, grown-up independence. Um, well, when you're a child and you grew up, um, you don't you don't live off of your parents and you don't share a bank account with your parents. When you grow up, you open your own. So why can't you be married and do the same thing? So if some of you are feeling rather hesitant and uncertain about that aspect of life, 
don't allow someone to take that independence away from you or to make you feel that you're doing something wrong and wanting to maintain that independence. So your hopes and fears, for some of you, um, it's, it's around money, it's around earnings, it's around, for some of you, you may be having job issues, and for some of you, there are other things coming up in life that's, that are unexpected costs, something along that line. There's the material aspect of the world is all wrapped up in your hopes and fears right now. Maybe some of you are trying to make large purchases, a house, a car, and you know, you're waiting for things to go through. There's a, there's a lot of tension and decisions and indecision and um, stress with uh, those kinds of things. So that's what's coming up for Leo. I just wanna take another peek. Mm, again, the idea of, of, there's the idea and almost like a warning, like one person doesn't have to hold all of the, the money for the family. One person shouldn't be in control of the finances. Um, that's a two way street. Even if you decide to go with like joint accounts and you know, pool everything together. Um, that doesn't mean that one person controls it. I have actually seen married couples where there's one partner or the other feels that that's the way it is. It's in both names, but you know, I'm in control. It's in both names, but I can tell you what you can spend. It's in both names, but I can take anything I want from it and spend what I want. So it works all different kinds of ways. So um, this should not be in the hands of one person either way, either way that you decide to go. So I'm glad I looked at that card again, because that seems like a rather important decision. I've seen disasters <laughs> come from that kind of thing. Last card, what will come to you? Uh, this is a like a very futuristic, in the future card, in the future card for Leo. What will come to you? And I'm not even going to contemplate this. I have no idea. So let's look at the card. Ah, Princess of Swords. I've had several of these readings and um, with the princesses or the pages, which are messengers. Princess of Swords, what is coming to you is, um, uh, oh my gosh. Um, it's a message. It's a connection. It's um, a communication. Um, it can be unpleasant. It can be a little sharp. It can be unexpected. Sometimes the, the bluntness of it is just unexpected. It's not that it's bad. Um, I'm going back and reconnecting with the Ace of Swords and what we talked about, about the estrangement and the, the lack of um, communication or the estrangement from someone and um, the, the cessation of communication. Well, what's coming to some of you, um, it's, yeah, you got it. Uh, what's coming to some of you is that, whatever that is in your life, whoever you stop talking to, stop communicating with, you may be in for a surprise because um, there is a, there's a sense of surprise that comes with this, uh, with this card. It, it's an unexpectedness, unexpected communication with someone you haven't been in contact with for a very long time. And that's going right back down to that Ace of Swords. So now I'm wondering, remember I said someone's holding the handle of that sword. Someone's in control of whether that connection will be remade whether that communication will be started again, someone is holding that sword in their hand. Someone has more control than, than the other on that. So that's something for Leo to look forward to. I'm also gonna look at this card just cause that's what I do. Uh, for some of you, it may be a little bit overwhelming. Um, for some of you, those the birds flocking around her, they're just, they feel like people flocking, like everyone's going to have an opinion about this. Oh, everyone's going to have an opinion about this. Everyone's going to put in their two cents. And you know, when two people are trying to reconnect after an estrangement, sometimes it's better if other people just be quiet. So think of that. Um, take what everyone says with a grain of salt and do what feels right to you in your heart. This is a very interesting place to stop this reading for Leo. So uh, be prepared, Leo, for in the future what will come to you. And with that said, I'm going to end this reading for Leo. If you would like a personal reading with me, please visit the Tarot Parlor at tarotreadingswithamethystrain.com. There is nothing like a personal reading. You can even ask me personal questions and receive very unique and personal answers. So see you next time. Thank you.